Welcome, everybody. Let's see this. Okay. So today is our club assembly. So before we do that, I wanted to welcome everybody. We have some guests here. And uh, Kathy, would you like to introduce your guests? I'd love to introduce my guests. This is Evan McKinnon, and I did not know he was coming this evening. We used, that's right, interloper. <laughs> We met at CIBC with Gundy many years ago when he was working there. He defected and he's now at Grant Thornton as a manager. And if you want to get into details about what he does, I'll let him tell you. So welcome, Evan. Hey. Thank you. And Eli, you have some guests from the U of A. Would you like to introduce them? So from the uh, U of A Road Rack Club, we have Kate, the president. And I'm going to only take a guess because I apologize. I haven't had a chance to shake the hands. So I'm going to say Kira. And Melina, perfect. Well, thank you very much for coming tonight. All right, there you go. And for those of you who haven't met Kate before, she's my counterpart at the UVA as the president. So I'm sure you'll see uh, Kate and crew here often, hopefully. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so in terms of our agenda, and I think that those are all of our guests today that I'm looking around. Okay, so in terms of our agenda, we have a packed agenda with our club assembly. I wanted for those who are new to our club, I wanted to talk about what exactly Club Assembly is. I wanted to discuss what the Rotary Citation is this year. A goal, my personal goals for the year, give a very quick financial update. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous meeting, handling donation requests. Then I'm going to turn it over to President-elect Kevin, who's going to uh, manage the rest of the meeting in terms of uh, committee reports. So all the committee chairs will have an opportunity to uh, talk about what's going on in their world. Um, Tamara just texted to say she has a flat tire, so I might, uh, I will step in for that. Stan Bissell, unfortunately, uh, he had to um, go t uh, on a trip to the UK uh, suddenly, uh, but we should be able to handle the rest. I'm hoping we're going to have some time at the end for an open forum so that we have the opportunity just to bring other things that we haven't discussed uh, forward. Uh, we'll talk about uh, upcoming speakers and then close with our four-way test. So that should cover it. So what exactly is a club assembly? Uh, basically, club assembly is where we're going to bring you up to speed on what's going on with the club. Uh, and many clubs use this as an opportunity for all members to discuss the decisions that affect the club and for committees to report on their activities. Uh, we just want to make sure that this is open so everybody knows what's going on and has an opportunity to include their voice in what we're doing. So that's why we do them, and we're encouraged to do them three or four times a year. So we'll we'll try to do these roughly once a quarter. Uh, also, uh, at the end of October is when uh, Ingrid, our current district governor, will be coming to uh, visit our club and fi also find out what's going on. Uh, club assemblies also are when we can present our financials. So once this uh, quarter is done and, and the stand is back, we're going to review the numbers for uh, – the previous year for Kathy's year so that we can file those and also provide a quarterly update on our current year on where things are going. Hello, Syed. So our, our citation, so in terms of for the benefit of Luke and Taylor um, and some of our newer members, a rotary citation is basically each year the rotary president, uh, gonna, for lack of a better word, issues a challenge and they say, here are my priorities for, uh, for this year. And if you're able to check off the bulk of them, usually it's four out of five or uh, whatnot, then you get a certificate saying congratulations, you met basically the goals of the president for the year. So that's in short what a, a Rotary citation is. Uh, Interact has one and the uh, Rotaract has one as well, which I'm sure you are already on accomplishing everything. <laughs> okay, so there are three categories for the Rotary Citation. The first one is support and strengthen clubs. And this is largely uh, on the membership side. Uh, first is achieve a net gain of one member. We started the year at 29. Unfortunately, uh, Ali um, has left her club, so that means we're down to 28. Uh, the goal that I have is 30, but I think uh, we have already Darren, 
uh, has submitted his application. Plus, we have another uh, lady who should be submitting her application. So we should already meet it by the end of this month or next, uh, and then grow it from there. We are a younger club, uh, lots of opportunity to grow and interest. So, and maybe we have Evan come and join us at some point. You never know. Um, maintain or improve your club's retention of current members and new members. So they said if your club's retention was 90% or more last year, maintain it, which is, which is uh, what it was. Achieve a net gain in females. Well, that's not a problem with our club. So I'm not worried about that one. Have at least 60% of club members report their birth dates through my rotary. So we've discussed this numerous times, but if you do not know how to do it, Kathy will show you how to do it now at the Rotary International Conference. Uh, it was brought up uh, that if you're not comfortable putting your actual birth date, really what they want is the year. So if you go into your your profile in Club Runner and just put January 1st and then the year, then that will certainly satisfy that. Uh, conduct a classification study of your members' occupations and work to align your membership with the mix of businesses and professions in your committee. We talked about that uh, at the executive level, probably not something we we're going to be focusing on, but something we'll certainly keep in mind, uh, given that our area is mostly retail with some from and some professional businesses. But uh, step one is just to get a, re a better relationship with the Old Strathcona Business Association. So I think that should be good there. The second area of focus is uh, increased humanitarian service. Uh, so one area is contribute at least $100 US per capita to the annual fund. Um, every few years we get Wayne Kaufman and Wayne McCutcheon, thank you, Kathy, uh, with the foundation to talk, uh, come and do a presentation. So we're up or do this year and so they'll be coming in November which is foundation month and talk about all the good things that the donating to the annual fund um, does uh, increase the number of members involved in service projects I'm not sure how you measure that but that's one of them and, and that's also a goal of mine is make sure everybody is involved in some way uh, hold an event to raise funds for or to increase awareness of rotaries work towards polio eradication we have our annual pool for polio which will be in November again uh, and conduct a significant local or international service project in one of Rotary six areas of focus. And of course, you've heard that we have a um, playground build in Belize in sometime winter of 2019. So, so far we're looking really good. And the final area is enhanced public image and awareness. And this is something that Kevin and I have talked quite a bit about and also with Taylor helping us out and Gisela helping us out is to um, and this is also something that Kathy is a superstar on, is posting our projects with Rotary Showcase, uh, which then also get brought into um, Rotary Central. So there's just some behind the scenes st stuff that uh, we're doing and then also working with uh, Kristen to make sure we properly record all their volunteer hours. So we're looking good there. Uh, the People of Action campaign is, is a big one for Rotary and they want to make sure that we're following the brand guidelines and templates so you'll see that we're continue to work on that structure um, and arrange for the club's members to talk with the media to tell your clubs and Rotary story. And that's basically Hockey Hall, Hockey Hall of Fame, Hockey Night on White, where usually Tamara talks to the, uh, to the press about that. And then finally, sponsor a youth exchange student, which we won't be doing this year, or a Ryler participant, which we will. So in short, that's the citation. As you can see, we have a lot of check boxes so I'm confident that that's something that we should be able to do and uh, this is a club acknowledgement for all the hard work so I like having goals to work uh, to work on and I think this year the Rotary Citation is fair and it's certainly achievable any questions about that or is that pretty straightforward how's yours this year I didn't have a look you don't have one you sure okay Okay. Well, we'll chat later because I thought I saw one for you. Okay. Sure. Okay, so my personal goals for this year, and I, I touched on them a, a bit uh, at the changeover party, uh, is, and I'm not going to read this whole lot, is one is to have a strong financial reporting system, which we have in place, and Stan's been a great help with that, uh, with Wave Accounting, and we're able to, to – Marie is helping with making sure – if you uh, need an invoice for meeting dues that you have that. We can also use that for events like the pool for polio for auction items and you can pay online through your bank. Hopefully that's working well for everybody. And also make continuing 
continuing the work on documenting roles, responsibilities, and plans with Kat, which Kathy started last year. Uh, also, I want to make sure every member of the club is engaged in some way. I'd like to see everyone me meeting their 50% attendance commitment either online or in person. So pretty much every, since the beginning of the year, every meeting has been uh, recorded and available online as it's happening through GoToMeeting. Unfortunately, last week, I forgot to turn the screen on for you. <laughs> so it was texting me, dude, can you turn the screen on? <laughs> um, so, so there's lots of options to attend either online or in person. Also doing makeups with other clubs is an option uh, or volunteering at events uh, or on a committee. So if you do do make, uh, makeups in any way, shape or form, make sure you email Maria and she will record, the, record those for you. Have a steady flow of guests. So it's great that we have our friends from the U of A as well as Evan uh, coming today. So I've, I've done the meeting promo videos as a, to, as a catalyst to encourage you to bring uh, guests. I think the, the one with the most views though was Kristen's. So you have lots of friends out there. So it's easy to just take that video, share it with your friends on Facebook. Here's something that I thought you might be interested in. Um, that's the main reason why I do it. And then I also want to have at least one corporate member from the Old Strath Kona Business Association, Shri Klassen, who's the executive director, uh, who I'm sure you've talked to about Hockey Night on White, or will be soon. <laughs> um, and I was pointing to Kevin for the online, not Kevin, sorry, Tim, um, for that, for those of you participating online. Um, and we're gonna do four to five field trips this year. Um, and one is, the first one's coming up in October. It's um, actually one of my neighbors, uh, Shane Turgeon, who is the owner of uh, Shades of Grey Tattoo Comics and Toys, which is right above Yanni's. And it's a cool space and uh, he's a bit of a character, so. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And I just happened to be walking my dog around the neighborhood one day, and, and he walks out and like, hey, hey. And so now it's just funny, a small world. <clears throat> and then uh, we also need to find our signature fundraising event, which I'm sure Tim will be talking about uh, later today. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to Kevin to move things forward with the committee reports. Thank you so much. So we're going to go through some of the committee reports to be able to discuss some of the things that uh, our committees are doing and are looking forward to doing. And I think we can get it started with, uh, it will be Kristen. Do you want to come up here and uh, show off uh, everything that Community Services uh, is doing at the moment? Woo! Woo! Thank you, sir. Oh, You're going to be my Vanna? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. You can go to the next one. That's just a, a placeholder. Um, so here are some goals, very similar to um, what Scott had already talked about, but these are goals that I made for uh, my year within the community service role. So I want to work on maintaining current community service relationships that we've already established. We have some great relationships that our club has worked hard on the last couple of years. Uh, so I want to make sure that we put a lot of effort into maintaining those. I would like to set a goal of hosting a community service event at least once every two months. I think sometimes we are a smaller club and sometimes we overcommit ourselves by doing too many events. So I'm really trying to be conscious of how many events that we're doing um, and knowing in advance like November we have pool for polio so November I'm intentionally not having a community service event so that we can really uh, make sure our time is spent the most valuable way. Um, I would like to continue to explore additional community service relationships within the Old Strathcona area. I'd really like to look into an organization that supports seniors that are at risk within our area so if anyone has any leads um, on um, organizations that support not only youth and adults but seniors in our area that would be great um, and then I'd like to continue to engage Rotaract and Interact clubs with possible community service partnerships so it's awesome that you guys are here too. Vanna please. <laughs> Um, so we did, um, before we had changeover with Kevin, we had our last uh, community service meeting. So we had a couple of action items from that meeting that have kind of fallen onto me and I'll continue to work on. Um, so one thing that had come up at our last meeting too was coordinating speakers with community service organizations. Um, so to have the speaker either present pre or post uh, our community service event. 
so that really we can see how our contributions make an impact and also we can learn from and share the experiences that we've had in that community service event. Sometimes we do an event and then we just have a quick, how did it go? It went really well at our next meeting, but we don't always have that opportunity to kind of learn about the experience or if it's a repeat relationship, what that looked like. So I'd like to put a little bit more effort into that. Um, dinner club, so that's a strong relationship that we've worked hard in our club uh, the last couple of years. So I'd love to see that continue to flourish. And then I'm hoping that we can get some more members that are going to um, volunteer to be a part of the rotation so that they can also experience dinner club and hopefully fall in love with it. Like, you know, those of us that have been doing it for a couple of years now. Uh, Ronald McDonald House, so that's also a relationship that our club has established. We traditionally, uh, within the last couple of years at least, have been um, hosting a Meals at Mend once a quarter or like twice a year is kind of what we've been doing. So we have one booked already for October, um, and then I'll book probably another one, maybe two. Uh, it depends on the interest of the committee and the interest of, of our club. Uh, and then potential community service relationships. So Lauren had mentioned um, looking into how we can help support an accessible women's shelter. Our last meeting, Paige had talked about uh, perhaps uh, looking into the multicultural brokers, health brokers organization, and maybe doing some sort of initiative with the Bhutanese community. So there's lots of great ideas kind of floating around. And if there's other ones that people have uh, that they'd like to work on, I'd love to work alongside you. Um, yeah, Maestro, please. So some upcoming events. Unfortunately, uh, our barbecue was rained out. Um, so I thank everybody that had worked on that while I was away. I just actually spoke to Nova this afternoon and we had a great conversation about rescheduling our barbecue. So it's likely going to be on the 20th of September, which is two Thursdays from this Thursday. So I will have more details that'll come out, but whoever is interested in helping me reorganize, replan, I'd love to have a couple people so that we can execute an even better barbecue than this one would have been. Um, Hockey Night on White, I'm sure Tim's gonna talk about. October 23rd is our Meals at Mend. So Kevin, Tim, and Lauren are spearheading this Meals at Mend on October 23rd. So I'm sure they will be looking for volunteers soon. November, as I said, we're not going to do a community service event because there's lots of other great stuff going on. Uh, we already have a date for the Neighbor Center Christmas dinner. So that is on December the 20th. So there'll be lots of opportunity to volunteer and we'll, I'm sure we'll do desserts again. So there'll be lots of ways that we can contribute. Um, and then I'd like to see us do the Skills Society stocking drive again in December as well. Vanna. Um, so there's always lots of ways to engage with community service. Um, the barbecue is obviously a, a first pick for September, Hockey Night on White, the Christmas dinner. Um, I would love to have a couple people experience dinner club if they haven't yet. I know Scott did a couple weeks ago, um, and I'm assuming you had a great time, Scott? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, are you joining the rotation? Very exciting. Um, and uh, any other opportunity that people have. I'd really like to play a support role so that um, there's members of the club that are going to be chairing the events. I'm just really helping you execute and make sure that we've got everything coordinated. So I'd love to see if a couple people each, each month could be um, supporting and, and planning one of our community service events. And then we're going to have our meeting for community service, mark your calendars, for the 18th of September after our regular club meeting. So whether you're a part of the community service uh, committee last year or you're interested and want to join us this year, we'd love to have you at the meeting. Any questions? I was that riveting or I put you to sleep. It's okay. <laughs> That was fantastic, thank you. That will be a tough act to follow and uh, it looks like I'll be the one following it. So all right, that's a good start. So uh, this will be a nice, fun and brief discussion on communications committee. Uh, so we have a couple goals for the upcoming year. Uh, we also have, just to start things off, uh, a meeting planned for September 18th. So either I will talk with uh, Kristen about maybe I don't know, maybe we can combine meetings, have a little bit of fun discussing it all, or I can just maybe work on 
moving around. But essentially, we have three goals that we're looking forward to at the moment. And one was just further strengthening our committee. It's already a fantastic committee with their great people working on it. However, you know, uh, me being still somewhat new to the role, and of course, one of our members leaving, we thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of see what we're doing, take uh, stock of uh, our actions as of so far, and making sure that we're engaging the right people, and seeing if anyone else wants to join. So uh, September 18th, is the after our meeting, is the proposed next committee meeting planned. However, it is uh, it could be moved, so stay tuned. <laughs> And the other one was just extending our reach to the community. So we already have some fantastic uh, platforms that we use to reach uh, people, not only our own membership and our friends, but other people in the community to get them involved in a lot of our activities. Uh, that includes Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and of course, just word of mouth. But there's a lot of other opportunities out there. So we thought we'd see uh, how we can harness some of these other platforms and see how it can work to our advantage. That includes just having a LinkedIn page. It's a great way by associating yourself through our club, having it on your LinkedIn page, just to be able to start those conversations of how, oh, well, you're on, you're a part of this uh, White Avenue Rotary Group. What's that? In, what's that do? Or also being able to reach people through the page by posting what we're doing, things like that. There's also Meetup, which is a fantastic platform that has different meetings uh, that you can post and has a whole online community. Uh, there is a pay uh, option for that. However, uh, at the moment, I think we can swing the next six months for free, so hopefully by the next meeting we'll have one set up, and then afterwards we can look at uh, setting one up specifically if we want to keep going with it. And then there's just also there's traditional routes. There's a lot of people are, are out enjoying the city. We can have put up some posters. So we can use some of the fine artistic skills that we have. Taylor is a great example. So uh, we're looking at just using some of those other platforms. But these are some of the things we can talk about uh, at our next committee meeting. And we can bring some of those new ideas as we go forward. And another one's just club-wide approach. The communications, as we may have noticed, one of the best ways to do it is word of mouth. It's through their interactions we have with one another and people in our own circles. So it's just a reminder that you can do this on your, uh, by yourselves by discussing it with friends, but also you can do it through our uh, communications platforms. If you're on Twitter, make sure to follow uh, White Avenue. If you're uh, on LinkedIn, maybe uh, throw it on your uh, LinkedIn page. If you're on Facebook, maybe add it as a friend and add a joiner for that. Maybe add me as a friend too, because I like friends. So, uh, so just uh, some things to keep in mind. So that's some of the things that we're thinking about for communications, but uh, our next committee meeting is gonna be our chance to kind of really discuss it. And well, well, I am next again. So president-elect. So this is um, just an FYI as we look forward to the next year. Uh, Scott's already doing a fantastic job. So I, I don't worry about too much about the next year, but I wanted to, I guess, establish the road to 2019-20. That's what I'm calling it. So it's just an idea of what we're going to be doing and how we can improve uh, you know, maybe if you see issues, things we can improve on, or just build on the fantastic work by the president's uh, current or previous. Uh, so some of the things I'm going to be doing as the president-elect is just meeting with members. Uh, this is something I'm hoping to start uh, at the latest January, uh, but just an idea of seeing uh, what everyone thinks about uh, how, how our club is doing, seeing what you see yourself in the future, and it's also an opportunity to kind of review uh, uh, and uh, maybe give some thought and consideration about what you think our club can do differently. So I'm actually going to put a challenge out right now. Uh, you can think about this, but uh, come January, we have those kind of one-on-ones, whether it be after meetings, before meetings, or just through a, you know casual conversation. Uh, what's something that you could see our club doing? What would something innovative that we don't do now that you would like to see our club try? If you have any one of those ideas, I'm going to kind of put that challenge that everyone has one idea of looking at, oh, here's something that we don't do that I think we should try. I'm going to be asking you about it. So just uh, give that some thoughts. And the second one is growing our club in the community. It's uh, not only having more people come to our club as uh, members, but also just making sure our clubs, uh, we do a lot of fantastic things in the community that that's recognized and it encourages people to come to our meetings. Uh, I think uh, we, we focusing on membership is fantastic, but also making sure that people realize that uh, our Rotary Club of Edmonton White Avenue is a friend of the community and that you can come by, join our meetings without necessarily being a Rotarian. It could be one of that first steps, or also making sure that we're considered when there's other community events going on. So something to put in mind. And of course, putting a team together. So when I meet members, I'm hoping to be talking to many of you about what role you hope to be doing in the upcoming year. So uh, I guess stay tuned. And next will be fellowship. Fellowship is, who is fellowship? 
Say it. Thank you so much. So I uh, invite you over if you want to come up. Woo! All right. Well, as everyone already kind of knows, uh, fellowship is all about having fun. All right. We're, we're trying to put the fun in the fun, fearless, and focused motto of ours. So uh, that's what we do with fellowship events. And um, I guess up to date, they've been uh, a variety of different things. Um, we've done the food crawl last year, which we're hoping to do again this upcoming year, which I think will be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, the next uh, most um, uh, fun thing on the agenda is the guest who's coming to dinner. So we've got two dates set for that already. It's uh, the 3rd and the 17th. So those are basically when um, members of the club go to other members of the club's house for dinner and uh, there's basically a lot of members eating dinner at people's houses so uh, <laughs> in a nutshell but uh, and having fun yeah so uh, so we're still uh, we're gonna post some information on that pretty soon uh, to everybody and uh, so hopefully people can sign up to that and and um, and come out uh, so that should be a lot of fun uh, then we've got, of course, our Christmas party, which we do every year, coming up on the 18th. Um, and uh, that's going to probably be right here, I imagine. Yeah, so um, a lot of fun always uh, for that. Um, I think we encourage everyone to bring uh, their significant others or guests. And, uh, yeah, and everything from uh, food, uh, drinks, and photo booths. Uh, so, yeah, lots of fun. Um, this is something that just came up uh, recently, so uh, I haven't had a chance to iron out any details with anyone yet about this, but uh, we're, uh, we've uh, made contact with uh, the people from the new newest distillery in uh, town, which is uh, the Strathcona Spirits Distillery. So it's an exciting new venture um, just down on 101 and uh, 81st Ave. So we're hoping uh, that we can line up a uh, tour of uh, the distillery, which would be in lieu of one of our meetings, I guess, but it also be uh, kind of a fellowship event. So hopefully uh, that'll be a lot of uh, fun and, and interesting at the same time. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to try and aim to maybe have that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if November's uh, looking too busy already, but perhaps by December we'll come out and do that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the food crawl, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to be um, planning another one of those. But, uh, yeah, in the new year, probably in the spring, once uh, the avenue is more walkable and we can actually walk from venue to venue without freezing our butts off. So, um, so yeah, uh, that should be a lot of fun. We'll choose some more interesting venues um, with uh, Lauren's help. And, uh, yeah, it should, be, it should be good. And, uh, basically, as far as the fellowship uh, events go, I uh, just wanted to throw this out there to everybody in the club that uh, you know, if you all have ideas for different fellowship uh, events, or if you think uh, it might be fun uh, to uh, get together and do certain things, then uh, you know, uh, give me a shout. Let me know um, what, what you're thinking. Send me an email if you want, and uh, maybe we can look at uh, uh, what you guys have in mind. If you do have any events, uh, you know, that you'd like to see us do as a group, um, yeah. So the whole idea is to just uh, you know uh, have some fun and. Uh, just put some of the serious uh, business of our club meetings aside for a night and uh, go out and uh, maybe have a few drinks or something. Um, and yeah, so um, if anyone does ever have anything they want to suggest, then uh, like I say, just uh, come talk to me or even Lauren uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll hash out some plans. So that's pretty much fellowship in a nutshell. Yeah. It looks like very exciting things for fellowship. So the next would be foundation. And we have our president here to talk about it. As I said before, unfortunately, Tamara's on the side of the road fixing a tire, so uh, I'm going to stand in for it. So the goal that we set for Polio Plus, an annual fund, is $5,000 each. Uh, Polio Plus, that's all the money that goes to, re to eradicating uh, polio, um, and that's why we do the Pool for Polio event. And then we also have the annual fund, uh, which goes to support all the other programs, so we're, we're, our goal is, and this is not so much how much our club, uh, or not just how much our club is uh, putting towards Pool for Polio, but it's also what individual donations are. So if you are on the monthly giving program uh, or uh, also the $25 uh, that is included in your membership goes into uh, 
support these two programs. So that's why we're bringing uh, Wayne and Wayne to come in and talk about where those funds go. And then also if you would like to individually talk to Tamara about your own donation. Uh, personally, I donate uh, on a monthly basis. So if that's an option that's interesting and of, uh, of interest to you, then certainly Tamara is the person to talk to about that. Every Rotarian, every year, that's the $25. Um, and the sustaining members is the monthly donation. Paul Harris Fellow, that's when you uh, donate $1,000 US, um, and then you get a certificate and, and a pin, and some of us in our club have that. I'm not wearing mine. Um, Pool for Polio is our event that we have in November. A lot of the stuff I've already talked about, so I'm going to just car uh, carry on. Uh, one of the goals for Ingrid uh, Nietzsche, who's our, our district governor, is that she'd like to be a peace a peace district. Um, there's four, 500 districts worldwide. Only 35 have become peace districts. She, she wants us to be one of them. Um, so basically what that means is that they're looking to build, and Kathy, perhaps you can help me on this one, is that they're looking to build, put money towards and supporting a peace education center, which is usually run through a university, but they'd like to, money, uh, to support that. So they're looking to raise funds uh, for this from our district, and I believe it's th she's hoping that uh, clubs will donate $500 um, for, towards it. So that's something that uh, we were looking to do. Is to be to support Ingrid on that. That would be outside of that 2,000 that I was talking about earlier, and would come from the extra funds that we have. So perhaps what we can do in similar fashion to what we did before is um, we is we have discussed it before. We can table it or we can vote on it. What would you prefer to do? Do do you want to just vote, or would you like to support voting? Support voting. Okay, so all in favor of donating five hundred dollars to be towards the peace district fund fundraising. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Maria, are there any people who are dissenting? Or what, what's the opposed? Thank you. Anybody oppose? No. Okay, carried. I will let Tamara know. So they so this goes towards the two hundred the twenty five thousand dollars that Ingrid is looking to raise. So thank you everybody, and uh, we'll get that sorted out. Uh, oh, I guess I could have turned to the next slide. This would have given you more information. Um, if you went to the district conference um, in the fall, there was actually an interesting presentation from an RCMP officer who was uh, one of the one hundred fellows who is doing. He was on a, a peace mission to Kiev. Uh, and he provides him on the street information on what really was going on. You hear what's going on in the media, but then you also hear, hear from somebody who's actually there telling you what's going on. And it's a very complex issue, uh, and it'd be great to have him actually as a speaker um, to talk about that, those type of things. Um, so there's 1,200 alumni who are currently uh, actively contributing to global peace building, and so this will help contribute to having more alumni. So thank you very much. Um, so yes. Also, where our club is going to, to donate the $500, but of course, if this is something that speaks to you and you'd like to donate personally, then you can certainly talk to uh, Tamara about that. And it's the, okay, I guess this is more for you, Stan, is the check is to be addressed to the District 5370 Peace Building Fund, but I'll let you sort that out with um, Tamara. And of course, if you do uh, donate personally, then you'll get a tax receipt for it. All right. That's foundation. And I'm going to turn it over to Tim to talk about fundraising. Yay. Yay, thank you. That clapping is for you, not for me, right? So fundraising. So as you know, the fundraising uh, field is very, very, very crowded. Um, if everyone is trying to come up with great ideas on how to raise money, we've got a few existing projects that I'm going to start off with, and then uh, there's one that we're going to be talking a little bit more about. So Hockey Night on White, so this is coming up on September 29th and it looks like I uh, was very good lucky in getting, there's a committee meeting after this meeting. So if you can attend, please do, because uh, we're about three and a half weeks away from this happening and there's a fair bit to do. I'm not worried at all, but uh, we, we have a bit of stuff to do. Hockey Night on White, historically we've had anywhere from zero to $4,000, $5,000 raised in this event. Uh, we didn't really have this as a fundraising event until a few years ago, and we've been very 
happily surprised uh, to see how much support we've got from it. So we have got um, a few sponsors on board yet, but this is something that uh, Taylor did up some great uh, fundraising packages that we circulated about three or four weeks ago, and we're going to do that again. And do uh, think of circulating that to your crew because it is something that companies can attach, you know, an event to, and it's uh, it is a very much a, a community event that they can come out and they can enjoy. Um, some of the people put a team in, uh, for instance, uh, my corporate uh, financial planner through work. Uh, they've got a team uh, in the tournament, and he gave me a check. See, I brought a prop. There's a little sponsor check here. Give it to Stan. But uh, that is a way for us to raise money. And so uh, let's try and see if we can't raise uh, four grand like we did last year. Pool for Polio, that's already been discussed. Uh, that is a great event, and uh, we'll be working on that in November. Rocky Mountain Wine Festival. So that is an event where we get to go watch people get drunk. And we make money off it by volunteering. And I don't know if you, have you guys volunteered for it. Yeah, yeah, I think you were last year, yeah. It's a great, it's a fun, fun event. I, every year I look forward to where you just go and uh, we earn $15 per hour for the club for the time that we work. And we also distribute that to all our friends online and uh, the club. And we end up getting quite a few of the, the people that kind of observe us from the distance and they seem to enjoy to, uh, that event. So we're doing that again this year. Wine Survivor. So we did year one. It was a lot of fun and it was good. We're going to do it again. And we'll do it even better this time. Um, maybe a few changes to it to smooth it out, but I think it, we did really, really well on that. Tentative fundraising initiatives. So we have the casino with the Mayfield Club. So what this is is uh, the Mayfield Club has a casino license. They have a casino periodically, and uh, we did work that with them, and we got $5,000 for our share the last time. Uh, per Maryland, she says it's on again, but she's just waiting for the date that that'll happen. So it's tentative on the date. Whether it happens in the next nine months, I don't know, but it is something that is on our radar, and that is a great way to make money. You know, it, it is some fun uh, and camaraderie for one very long night, but it's a lot of fun. So. Yeah. You raised eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. All right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Disappeared. All right. Uh, raffles. So this is one thing we've done periodically. Um, I think sometimes we get a little, you know, tired in the club on all these raffles that we're always pushing. But, you know, they are something that we can usually fund through donations to the club. And so we are going to continue to do those, maybe in a little more selective in the time. But uh, we are going to do one during uh, Hockey Night on White. Uh, Tamara and I will get that going, and uh, it's a great thing during Hockey Net and White, if any of you haven't been there, to have somebody walk through the crowd and get customers other than our friends and relatives. You know, that's really the the, 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 the goal there, because I'm sure our friends and relatives get tired of us uh, flogging our raffles. But um, district grants, I don't have a whole lot to talk about that. Uh, others might in this room might be able to elaborate on that, but uh, we have had grants in the past, and we will actively apply for those four projects that it makes sense. So. There we go. All right, so signature fundraising initiatives. So we've talked about this for a couple of years, and this is something that you know, we've talked, uh, we've in the past we've dabbled with things like theater and other things. Uh, these are some off the top ideas we've been bantering around for the last few months. One would be like an auction, uh, like a white av experience. Um, I really like, if you go to omaze.com, I know this is thinking big, but you can go on there and you can bid on a, uh, you know, write a song with Bono and Edge from U2 and, or go for a surf with, you know, uh, what's his name, Kelly Slater, you know, like that. So the, uh, these are great ideas. Obviously, uh, the goal of a fundraising initiative is to make it in perpetuity, make it something that you can get a long, long run out of. Uh, the club that uh, Mike and I used to be at, Maryland and Tamara, we had our what is this, 15, 20-year run for some of the major fundraising uh, initiatives. And so that's what we want to do is get something that it's going to be tough to think it up, to create it, but then you want to build a brand around it. So this is something that you just don't approach uh, 
you know, with without really, really thinking through what you can do to make, the goal is to make money. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that you don't end up losing money, which we've done in the past with some of our events way back seven, eight years ago. Some of the things, you know, like have a, I don't know if you, anyone knows what a Pecha Kucha is. Uh, it's kind of like a TED Talk almost, I think, sort of, maybe. Yeah. yeah, and some of the ideas there were find um, an institution in the city that is bringing a really high profile speaker on board for an event and beg them, you know, can he stay over one more, he, she, can they stay over one more night? We'll pay their hotel room or whatever and get them, you know, a different audience, you know, stuff like that where, you know, the, the, the speaker would come and we'd be able to sell lots of tickets. So that's an idea. I thought that'd be a great idea if we could ever um, make enough contacts in a group to find out uh, if you know of any events with great speakers coming up. Uh, Fringe Festival Theatre event. Last year, Steve McCrory and I had uh, went and talked to the Fringe Festival Theatre uh, guy on possibly doing that. That is a possibility. Uh, sometimes it's tough to make a lot of money given uh, the size of the theater and that you have to pay for the actual theater itself. Some of the other things, joint initiatives with other clubs and organizations. We're not, uh, it's not below us to do something jointly with a club, but it is nice to have our brand on it because then we reap all the benefits of our hard work. And I'm just saying, bring on the creativity. You know, like we, we, are, uh, we, we have a lot of very smart people in this room with a lot of creativity. And uh, you've seen a lot of things that might work or might not. Uh, but we will have a committee meeting on this soon. And I apologize, I haven't really been on, on this yet. Uh, but we are going to get on it. So any questions? Any ideas? Maria? Very good question. Maria asked, uh, once we have the signature fundraising event, uh, will that go towards something? That's a very good question. Like it, we have to, we have to sit down and, you know, we do have to strategize that because uh, the major signature fundraising events that I've been on in the past, you know, they, they would give 50% to a Luana shelter or something and be, be part of a, an ongoing relationship with that other cl uh, so that you know, a lot of these would, you don't only support Luana Shelter and their supporters, but then you'd have ongoing funds to be able to give away $500 to this um, foundation and $200 to other groups. So yes, it is really good to have, you have to have some kind of a goal and who it's going for. So you think that's, how you sell. that's how you sell. That's how you sell. Maria's be part, be part of the brand. Yes. And it's co-branding with the ones that we've been involved with the Mike and at our previous club co-branding with another, non-for-profit organization so so it's wide open wonderfully said thank you so much and i think the last one we have oh sorry there is a question I just don't, um, that, that's a great idea. You know, if we start getting some um, leverage on one event and it starts going, that would be a very much a possibility. Um, the, you have to look at where the funds go. Like, and usually when you have a signature event, it's meant to be able to give your club a bit of uh, leeway on the funds you raise. And right now we've got the pool for polio. The funds do 100% go to polio, right? So that would be something that, uh, um, you know, the goal of a signature event is to fund a broader initiatives overall, but if that took off, you know, definitely you'd have to convince the polio uh, the crew that maybe you're in. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Kathy said, once we eradicate polio, we can uh, rebrand it. So, thanks so much. And now I believe we're going to have uh, our president again come up and speak on behalf of our president-elect nominee on the International Committee. That's right. Yay! <laughs> I also wanted to point out that it is 10 to 7. We still have a lot to go through. Um, so if you have to leave it at 7, um, that's fine. But uh, just a heads up, um, 
that that's certainly a possibility. Okay, so as I said uh, before, Stan can't um, uh, be here today, unfortunately, so I'm speaking on his behalf. Uh, most of the stuff you, you're familiar with, um, one of our projects is Kiva. We've committed to fi another $500 uh, this year, uh, in addition to the $500 last year. One, one thing that he would like help with is uh, finding different projects in Kiva to donate to. So he challenged me to come up with one. So I'm just going to very quickly show you what it is. So this is the one that I asked to be funded. Uh, it's in uh, Zimbabwe. And uh, the reason why I picked it, it and actually came across it fairly quickly, is it, it's a single mother. So she has kids, so I identify with that. Uh, and she needed uh, to raise some funds to uh, develop, further develop her greenhouse. Uh, and I like greenhouses. Um, and that's her business is basically she wanted to uh, start this business so that she could promote healthy living within her community. Um, and she also seemed to have some business acumen, so I figured she would use the money well. Uh, her total loan was $2,700, not, uh, and we were one of 84 lenders to that, and uh, it was funded. So that was the project I recommended. So if you, ha if you happen to go on Kiva and there's projects that you're interested in, let Stan know, because he would certainly appreciate the help in identifying further uh, loans. So that was the one that I recommended. Um, if you were here a few weeks ago, you'd, you would have heard that the thought of the day surrounded Shelterbox because there was an earthquake in Indonesia and Shelterbox put a call out to, uh, to help donate. And since we we're going to do it anyways, we said now is the time to do it. So we did do that to donation to Shelterbox. So it's going to Indonesia. Uh, he would like to hold an awareness event to raise funds for Shelterbox. Uh, there was a number of things um, that he was talking about, including holding a, a, an event at his new house. So uh, he also was thinking about doing an event where they, it was powered by solar lamps because that is also an initiative that they're working on. So stay tuned for that. There, he's thinking about some very interesting things. Uh, and then um, if you're here for the Amarok Society presentation uh, last year, uh, we are doing a donation presentation to them on September 18th. So there are some good things happening um, on the international front. And, yeah, well, it's uh, John and I, I can't remember his last name, who's basically the Amarok representative for the Spruce Grove Club, who will be here to accept it on their behalf. Um, and then, of course, you've heard about the playground installation that uh, we'll be doing in Belize, and it's accessible from what I understand. So that's... So there you go. Now I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Strobel, and I'm not sure if Mike's going to join you, but to talk about, mer talk about membership. My, my partner in... This will work eventually. There you go. It's okay. I'll stretch. So what Mike and I have been taught, we've met a couple of times about membership, and we've identified three areas that we're focusing on. I de I, I, generally speaking, membership is about attraction, attracting new members. It's about onboarding new members, and it's about retention. So that applies to not new members, but everybody in the club. When we look at attraction, it is everybody's job to bring people in. We want to look at our friends, family, colleagues, community partners. Anytime we have an event, that is an opportunity. Or anytime we talk to someone about support and sponsorship, that's an opportunity for us to share a little bit about what we do and see if people are interested in coming. Sometimes people come like Evan, completely without any uh, uh, communication with anyone from within the club, but then maybe they know a little bit about. We want to share, and everyone should be talking about the things that we do in Rotary. It doesn't mean it's the right fit for everyone, but we need to talk about it. It's good things. We're doing fantastic things. Do you want to add anything to that? On the spot. <laughs> On the spot? No. <laughs> Mike is the idea guy, so I'll just keep talking here until he jumps in. On the onboarding side is primarily the committee's job. It's the executive job and also the sponsor, whoever is 
recommending the individual to become a member of the club. All of us are involved really in the onboarding. We've had various strategies in the past. We're trying to put together a checklist. So let's say Mike and I aren't available for a little while, but the executive knows where to find the checklist. At least we can cover all the bases. At least everyone knows that when they come in, these are some of the elements. We like to have a conversation, chat with people, have them meet other people, get to see if it's a fit. But the onboarding piece is really important. We won't, don't want to drag it out too long. We don't want to have surprises. We want everybody to know what they're getting into when they join the White Ave Club. It's very different when you go to other clubs, so we want to introduce them to us and our culture. <laughs> <laughs> On the retention side, I'm going to just grab my notes. Mike and I have had some really good conversations about some ideas, and what we realized is the involvement, when we get now to retention, and it's all of you in this room, why you joined Rotary, what keeps you in Rotary, what are your... Um, areas of focus really, whether it's an international event or um, local community services, we have so much involvement with hands-on stuff. We want to make sure that we're involving you in those pieces. We also want to make sure that, let me just check my notes, we realize that it's not just about membership when we're doing these retention pieces. It really is about partnering with all of the other committees. Fellowship and mentorship and membership go hand in hand. Vocation goes hand in hand as well. If we're trying to get people excited, stay, develop themselves, find new projects, find the thing that they love, we need to get more people involved. So instead of just Mike and I on membership talking about these, we want to talk to you, Syed. We've got some, some fun ideas. Maybe there's some things that we can do together. So rather than sitting in separate meetings sometimes, the leadership or the executive meetings are really important too that Scott's got scheduled so that we can we can have some cohesive, some maybe bigger bigger thinkers all in the room doing the same, you know, exciting things. Yeah, I've been talking about it. Do you want to add anything or did you talk about us? No. <laughs> no. One, 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 I'll give you one example on the, it is partly fellowship, I think, because we talked about, Scott and I have talked about it, we've talked about it with a few other people, is getting everyone to go out on a coffee date with everyone in the club. So whether we partner you up with two people and it's your job in this quarter to have, we've talked about it with you, Kate, actually, to have coffee with someone on your own time, on your own schedule, whenever you can, and just sit for half an hour, an hour, get to know people. When we volunteered and done stuck in an ice block on White Avenue for the Ice on White Festival, I learned so much about the people I was volunteering with. It was fantastic. So it's more than just the meetings that are here, than the things that we do here. It is about who we are, what we love to do and all of a sudden I realize Evan is a musician and he's going to join our talent show. I made that up entirely. So yeah, way yeah. <laughs> So things like that. It's it's amazing what you find. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my triangle in the trunk. We can just do fine. But um uh, so the the idea is maybe maybe the job job. Maybe the fun part is to get everyone to meet with everyone for a coffee throughout the 12 months. And if you have managed to get 12 out of 29 or whatever the number is, maybe your name goes into a draw. Oh, Mike's. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There is a draw. There is a draw. And the, and the prize is phenomenal. <laughs> That's all I'll say. It is phenomenal. Okay. It involves travel. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't even know that. Huh? Yeah. Okay. What else can we bring up on the fly? <laughs> what other enticements and sweeteners? Well, that... Maybe a bottle of wine too. Yeah. Barbecue and wine. Well, in and, and any case, yeah. In any case, these are the the elements that we're focusing on for membership. It's about traction, onboarding, and retention. All those pieces are really important, and every other group within the club is important to make sure that this works together. So we all work together that's my that, what I've got the price has anybody heard of Bruce Alberta yeah. yes 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 it's you it's <laughs> stay tuned it's it's about an hour and a half away east of here and uh, they resurrected the the tavern and it's it's a, a food place now a steak place you need a reservation there's people from Edmonton that travel. It's close to my hometown. That's how I know about it. And it's good food, good time. 
okay? So I can't guarantee uh, how you get there. <laughs> so no travel. What he's saying is there's no travel involved in this. Travel. Not freebie travel. Not freebie travel, but, uh, you know, if you invite the right person to come along as your guest, <laughs> you know, it could be free travel. So anyway, two tickets for the Bruce Hotel. It's legend. Wait for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before we close, so this is a, 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 an idea of what's happening on the membership committee. Anybody want to join? Then uh, Mike does have one announcement. Knowing that we're close to 7 o'clock, we wanted to make sure that we got this in before anyone had to leave. And now I pass it over to you officially. Thank you very much. Um, recently, some guy got married. Finally bit the big onion, you know. And if you look closely at his fingers, his nails don't have any dirt under them anymore. <laughs> you know, and uh, a little calloused, you know. So I think the housework and everything is going good. Uh, congratulations, Kevin and Ellie. Uh, on behalf of the club, we'd like to present you with this card. Oh, thank you. Best wishes. May you have a long, loving life together. Thanks, Mike. Congrats. And we hand it back over to Mr. President. No, President Oh, President oh. Sorry, MC of the Mr. Willis, just to add to like retention is probably a good idea to put effort in so that like people that we know who are never going to be a part of our like membership but are volunteers and are friends, like how we continue to to cultivate relationships. Yeah, we have a great friend category of individuals on Club Runner, and that is true. We can't ignore non-members. Very good point. I'll have Scott amend the presentation for next time. Thank you. It's going over to me anyways. So, but uh, thank you, Kathy and Mike. Good job. Uh, yeah, for the, the friends list, uh, Kristen was wondering about that. Uh, if you get... Uh, Club Runner has changed things, uh, so we're going to have to clean the list, but it's, you're right that it's a, a good source of things. And when I send my weekend update uh, emails uh, in, in lieu of a bulletin, uh, I did it that way just to try to give you quick bite-sized bits of information. Does that work, by the way, for everybody? Is that a better way of doing things? Okay, good. Is is it that I do send it to the to the friends list. So it goes out to about 300 people a week. And uh, I know Wyatt has uh, getting them, and he seems to like them. And that's why you're here. So good. So th so that's wh how the communication is. But you're absolutely right. Our friends list is certainly a, a good one. Okay, program services. Uh, thanks for nice to see you guys again. Yeah, you got to go. That's fine. We're running over. Take care, Luke and uh, Taylor. Okay. Oh sure. Oh sorry. Because Luke, you can't leave yet. I'm on your behalf. I'm donating two dollars to our fundraising account to say congratulations on your new job. Yay, Luke. <laughs> Luke, now, Luke, I, so I'm, I'm telling the story for you. Sorry, you work at Marsh Canada now. You're in Manulife Place, so you're in the same building as me. You can't escape me. <laughs> Maria sees me all the time. Kevin sees me all the time. Sorry, you're going to have to see me all the time. And so congratulations on that. And, and thank you. <laughs> The last thing I wanted, another happy toonie, is because Marilyn's listening and her son got married on September 1st. So also congratulations to um, Marilyn's son, TJ, getting married. Congratulations, Marilyn. And actually, Marilyn, I know you're listening. Uh, I'm going to donate $5 for, uh, for happy bucks for that as well. Okay, good. Okay, program services. So Laura is actually going to be taking over uh, shortly for this. Uh, so, but I'm going to cover kind of where things are at in terms of our programming um, for this year. So programming is in place, uh, and thank you, Kristen, also for helping with this. Uh, programming is in place till the end of October, and then November is pretty wide open. So if you pay attention to the speaker list on our website, you'll see that. Um, Based on the membership survey that we took, um, the way that in my mind that I'm proposing is that one of the things that people wanted to know about was what's going on in our city. So I've kind of 
structured uh, and started getting a bunch of uh, people uh, in those veins. So learning what's happening in Old Strathcona in Edmonton is one of the kind of priority areas that I see as having. So that's why uh, we're having uh, Shri Klassen, the Executive Director for Old Strathcona Business Association coming in a couple of weeks. Next week is actually Taylor and Luke's Who's Who. Um, that's also why I originally had Kim uh, Chriselle coming to talk about her time on council, so that's going to be rescheduled. Uh, also, we're bringing, going to be bringing in the police who patrol this area to talk about safety uh, in this area. Uh, I also, when I was at the OSBA AGM, they were talking about a big project, which is putting an LRT down uh, White Avenue, which is very controversial, especially amongst the uh, pe the folks who own businesses here. So we're going to have the city come and talk about that. Also, uh, Shane Turgeon from who we're going to do a um, the field trip in, in October. He was very outspoken against that. So we're going to be talking about that. There is a development pl called uh, Plan White, I believe, uh, about what's going on there. So we'll have that. But that gives you a flavor of on that side and I've sent a list to Laura and Kristen uh, and about what I foresee but of course if anybody has any ideas on who they'd like to have as speakers let us know because we're, we're certainly it's a big calendar to fill and we're, we're looking for help if you have to go Evan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay well thanks for coming appreciate it yeah. Uh, field trips to local businesses, like I said, four to five. Field trips include uh, also Kent of Inglewood, uh, Chris, who also did the, the field trip uh, last year with uh, the Knifeworks. So he also is the manager for Kent of Inglewood, which is a, a cool space. Uh, I met the the owners of uh, Extend Bar A. So that's a husband and wife group that own that. Um, also... Off the top of my head, I can't think of the other ones, but we have four or five that we've got planned. Um, programming is also rotary and membership projects. Like I know Kristen talked about her trip at Wyaninta. Did I say it right? Uh, trip, which was great. Uh, who's who? So if you haven't done your who's who yet uh, or the classification talk, uh, we will be getting you to do yours. Um, so Taylor and Luke is next week. Marie and I did ours a couple weeks ago. And then, of course, we have the fellowship event. So it's an exciting year planned, and I'm stoked. I think it's going to be great. Well, it's continuing to be great, I should say. Uh, but again, we're always looking for your input. Fair enough? Okay. So now we're going to turn it over to Paige to talk about voc vocational services. <laughs> Hey, I need this to help me, so I'm going to put them all on there. <laughs> um, so I'm vocational services chair. It's a humble committee of one right now. Um, if any of this interests you, then feel free to let me know and say that you want to join. That would be really cool. Uh, the main piece of vocational services that I focus on is the Rotary Employment Partnership. So I sit on the steering committee for this at the district level. It's a partnership between Rotary and Inclusion Alberta that seeks to find meaningful paid employment for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, in support of the Rotary Employment Partnership, our club kind of talks about it on an ongoing basis. We have members who are continually seeking to create connections with possible employers. Um, and we usually do some kind of event every year for it. So we did a spring into employment event two years ago where we brought employers and community members together to learn about the partnership. Um, and this year, we're thinking about maybe doing a field trip uh, to one of the local businesses, particularly in the White Avenue area, that uh, support the Rotary Employment Partnership. So someone who employs a person with a disability through the partnership. Um, might be cool to learn about their business and why they chose to participate in the partnership. Um, you can watch your emails because I'll send out quarterly e-blasts uh, that are all about the partnership. And uh, I'm also a table captain for the Inclusion Alberta Fundraising Breakfast. So by helping raise funds for Inclusion Alberta, we support the Rotary Employment Partnership. So you probably will receive an invitation from me in the coming weeks to attend the breakfast um, to learn more about the partnership. And I also would encourage you to think of a guest who you might want to bring to the breakfast as it's an awesome opportunity for them to be exposed to Inclusion Alberta and the partnership. Um, 
An, a second big goal for the committee this year is to just figure out what exactly vocational services is in Rotary and then what it means for our club because it's been pretty ambiguous up until now. Um, so I'm going to be doing a presentation to the club in November about vocational services in Rotary and um, doing some discussion around what we think we'd like it to mean for our club. Um, and then we'll do a minute for vocational services during the month of January, which is vocational services month, just to continue to learn about vocational services in Rotary. Thank you so much. And next we're going to have uh, youth services. So I think we're going to have, who's coming up for talk? Oh, Eli, there he is, of course. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eli. Thank you. So uh, I'm Eli Schrader and I'm the Youth Services Chair and uh, I have the pleasure of being part of the Interact Club at the Old School uh, High School and this year uh, working with the U of A Rotaract Club as well. So today's the first day of school for the Interact Club uh, so they haven't had actually any meetings yet so we agreed that I would just make up the stuff that they're going to do for the next year. Um, no, the uh, uh, and partially is that uh, um, the Interact Club, they are going to be doing their kind of yearly plan here in the next two weeks. Um, this being the second year for myself, uh, supporting them, getting an idea of what that whole kind of uh, sponsorship means. I'm sure the Road Rock kind of get this perspective as well, is uh, through the handbook that I, I guess I never really read jumping into this whole piece, was that uh, we're here to kind of support these ideas and bring any mentorship or thoughts or how to make them more uh, sustainable or reality. So a lot of these ideas, the first couple years we had was many concepts. Uh, last year, we definitely started to narrow it more and more down and put a little more structure into it. So I'm dearly hoping uh, this year with specifically the Interact Club, still haven't known too much around the road wreck, but it seems like it's a well-oiled machine, is that our club will have much more updates and, and understanding what's going on, when it's happening, and uh, how we can be more and more involved. Yeah. Scott's saying I'm talking too much already, so I'm going to speed it up real quick. <laughs> 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 Here we go. Yes, I know. I, I'm going to make sure they didn't want me to make up their year calendar, so I'll go through the Interact one here real quick. In terms of their uh, highlights, uh, so their biggest thing, it's really cool with their new executive. They've got a lot of uh, grade 11s this year, so they're most likely going to be around for a couple years. Their biggest thing that they'd like to learn more about is this Belize trip and see how they can get more and more involved, whether it's this year or the next one. Uh, they'll be at Hockey Night on White. Uh, coming up here uh, end of September. Uh, their club fair, which is where they do most of the recruiting, is their third week, I believe, September. So they're really just kind of figuring out what communication they want to bring and materials and things like that. Uh, for that club fair, that's when they also make sure they demonstrate or let all of the, uh, the students know what projects they'll be working on throughout the year. A couple of things that they've brought over from last year's, but once again, they'll be a little more flexible, is that they'll continue to do a polio day. This is just kind of an information one, as well as uh, I believe they do a food drive. Uh, the Christmas food drive and ornaments was one of the ones that they just did last year that was brand new that they really enjoyed. So they created a lot of different uh, homemade treats, some Christmas ornaments, and delivered them to the Stollery uh, Children's Hospital to patients that were there. And uh, towards end of February, this one hasn't really been finalized, but uh, they do a week long, uh, what they call a period week, which brings uh, uh, resources and uh, knowledge to vulnerable women within the, uh, I believe, inner city and homeless population, uh, as well as raise funds and uh, material for them. And uh, they just kind of threw this one out there. I don't really know any details about it, but they said they want to do some kind of video game tournament. I think this club this year has a, a strong connection in that area so so more to come when they uh, I guess get all settled to this isn't my favorite day of year for uh, school so I don't know if it is theirs either but uh, they're back at it I'll pass it over the road erect. okay I'll keep it short and sweet everyone we haven't started um, our year yet we uh, we did some stuff this summer we did one committee it was called um, our sun protection committee and we raised 80 bags of sun protection supplies like hats and sunscreen and water bottles for the homeless population in Edmonton. So that was our summer project. Um, coming up for us now is this coming Monday is consent carnival. So it's our third time doing consent carnival. Basically, we're just having um, a conversation about consensual, uh, about 
uh, sexual consent on on campus, which is something that it doesn't get talked enough about. And um, it, we've had a really, really good response to it previously. So we usually have about um, up to 2,000 people engaging with that event. So if you're able to come out, it is from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on main quad this coming Monday, September the 10th. Um, and we're, we're really excited to see it happen again. Um, and then apart from that, um, we're doing clubs fair this week. We have info session next week, and we have our first meeting and idea generation the week after. And then I'll, uh, I'll be back, and Wyatt will be back, and we'll tell you what committees we've chosen and what's going on for the semester. But for now, that's, that's what's going on. Thank you so much. That sounds fantastic. Thank you so much. And upcoming committee meetings. So we, of course, have tonight Hockey Night on White, which ought to be very exciting. So hope everyone can stick around. Uh, September 18th, we have Communications and Community Services, uh, a joint uh, committee meeting. It will be fantastic. Talk about great things. In fact, we heard that membership's thinking about having a meeting. Just come on in. We'll have a great time, September 18th. Um, and then we are, I'm in the way. I thought you'd rather see me, so that's OK. <laughs> But anyways, upcoming speakers, I can go through this. So of course, next week, we have to look forward to uh, Luke and Taylor's Who's Who. And then we'll have uh, the week after, Oshathakuna Business Association. And then of course, as you can see, a great list of activities. But for brevity, maybe I won't go through each one, just so uh, knowing that it's already past seven. So with that in mind, if there's no questions, concerns, issues, things people would like to raise, I would like to point to you. I would like to point you to our president, who has a great point to make. Okay, I'm going to do a better job of standing to the side. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I just going back to the speaker thing. I just wanted to point out uh, also, so the executive uh, noted this is October second because we have hockey night on white. Uh, that that Saturday before there's no meeting on on October second, but I would like to have an executive meeting in preparation for our district attorney, our district attorney, <laughs> district governor. Yes, I have had too much legal stuff in my life lately. Sorry, district governor meeting at the end of the month. So, uh, just want to point that out. And then October 9th is a field trip. And then uh, if you saw the email uh, I sent out a couple weekend, I think it was not this past weekend, the weekend before about uh, Veg and Yedge. That was something that came from Sophie. Uh, we got in touch with the people who do Veg and Yedge, and so they're going to they're stoked to come and talk about their little uh, garden business. So that, that'll be cool. Sorry, that's really what I wanted to say. Oh. Can you clarify, like, executive meeting is the task within, like, leadership? Is it four people? No, the entire leadership team. Yeah. Everybody, everybody who basically everybody who presented today, I'd like to see you. <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry, yes. To be announced, um, the early, yeah, I might be able to move it to five thirty, or five or five. 5.30 probably would be the earliest. If you can't, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do our best. But the we have a few weeks location to be announced. It could very well be at my office uh, or maybe at your office. We'll, we'll, fi we'll figure it out. Okay, thank you. And with no further ado, I would like to point you to this very fine four-way test on, I guess, depending which way you're facing, the right side of the room. And to go through it, so the fourth-way test is, of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.